Hello and welcome back. This is my art studio, Windows 7 Art, and we are going to jump straight into the final stage of our Fantasy Castle oil painting. Cue that intro. It's been really rainy this last week and it's serving to bring out the first sprigs of that really nice green spring grass which I love so much. So I'm going to get myself all set up in the studio where it's nice and dry. Now over the weekend I noticed that there was one change that I didn't do in the modeling stage that I really should have. So I'm actually going to just do that kind of quick here. Um, and the change that I decided to make was, which it's okay, you know, technically this is the detail stage, but I'm kind of picky with my paintings. So I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and do that in the detail stage, even though it technically should belong to the modeling stage. But that technicality aside, uh, the change that I wanted to make was I didn't like how the water um, on the lower kind of pool area there underneath the waterfall, I didn't like how it ran off the left side of the canvas on the bottom there. So I decided to kind of landlock it on that side and actually push the water out towards the right um, behind the cliff in the foreground there. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, it's, it's really still modeling that I'm doing, but yes, it's the detail stage. I just I had to point that out because um, that's okay to do. You know, if there's a, a change that you really want to make, just go ahead and, and go for it, even though, you know, Technically, this is the detail stage. It doesn't really matter, <laughs> in other words. Now I'm getting into the true detail of the painting here. And you'll notice that I'm starting again with what's farthest away, which is in this case, the sky. It usually will be the sky. And I'm working my way forward. So the details that I wanted to put into the sky was mainly up in that right hand area uh, where I wanted to have a little bit of that blue sky revealed with really bright sunny white cloud highlights to suggest maybe a distant storm sweeping into this valley from the mountains on the left hand side where I left it dark and cloudy. So basically what I'm doing for the clouds up there is I'm taking pure titanium white, mixing in a little bit of linseed oil as a medium so I can improve the flow of the paint. And I'm going up there and I'm touching 
up those clouds and then right there you'll notice I added some blue sky in which was a mixture of uh, sky blue paint and titanium white so that I could really bring a sense of sunlight coming in because the way the painting is when I complete the detail stage it's really going to allow for a lot of bright direct sunlight hitting the foreground uh, the castle etc so I really wanted to bring that up in the clouds there and I'm just about finished with that I would imagine that this painting is capturing a time right about sunset, I would say. So you got the sun going down and it's shining across and it really should have a feel of um, those warm golden colors. So this painting, when I'm finished with it, is going to have a very warm kind of sunset light glow to it. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking dark greens and I'm adding in some shadows to the hill that the castle is perched upon. Um, and also some highlight greens to kind of chisel the shape of the hills. And Really, that was a process of trying out different angles and different lines to see what I liked best. So you can see I, I'm trying different things out and then kind of going back over it maybe with some of the darker greens and then kind of uh, going over spots that I had highlighted to kind of change the shape until I got a shape uh, that I, of the hill that I liked best. So it's really just, it, it was for me just a preference of what I wanted the hills shape you know and definition to be adding in a little bit more shadows there as well the castle is very important obviously it's it's the focal point of the painting so I made sure to add in a little bit more shadows where I thought it was needed, uh, keeping true to the direct sunlight that it would be getting. And just a way of describing the castle as I go ahead and, and put these highlights on, I really kind of shied away from adding in too much crisp detail to it you notice I'm going generally quick here with my highlights um, and I'm not being too careful to keep everything super detailed and crisp on this just because it's farther away but I just I noticed that it created a nice effect for the eye to fill in the blanks and also kind of um, it gave the eye a lot of texture to be able to add those details that I, I thought would be detracting from the castle if I tried to do it myself. So hopefully that makes sense, but for the highlights on the castle, I basically used a really bright, kind of yellowy brown, or a warm brown uh, with a lot of titanium white for those highlights on the castle. Now I'm putting on uh, the highlights for the roof, which basically is a very light gray obviously using again a lot of titanium white in that mixture and I thought it would be cool to take a scarlet red color and add in those flags which I went ahead and did now I'm working on the foreground and the foreground is going to have a lot of contrast between those shadows and those bright sunlit highlights and because it's closest in the painting Remember, the darks are going to generally be darker and the lights are going to be lighter. So you can see I highlighted the rocks there with basically just pure titanium white, I think. And I'm making sure to uh, get the grass really bright where the sun is hitting it directly. And also, I'm increasing the shadow in that cliff there as well. 
and to get that grass effect, I, I went ahead and took a fan brush here and put it into my mixture of bright yellow. And I did have a lot of titanium and white, I believe, in that mixture as well. And so I'm just going with the fan brush and highlighting the grass with it. It adds a nice grassy effect. Same concept with the shadowed grass as well. And as I started to build the grass, you notice that rock, um, the, the second rock that's farther away on the hillside here, started to uh, go away. That's just because um, as I was looking at it, yeah, you can see I painted right over it there. I just, I just didn't like how it basically mirrored the rock in front of it. Um, that's just personal preference. I, I, I could have left it. Uh, it, it, it just really felt redundant to me. I guess that's why I took it out. Um, but I guess I, I could have left it too. It's, it's really just personal preference. I thought it looked a little bit too much like the rock in front of it. And I thought there should really be one. So that's why I took it out. Now I'm highlighting the waterfall with pure titanium white as well. And the water above in that one sunlit area where it starts to spill over the cliff there into the pool below, um, which I guess it's a river, uh, so into the river below, that's where the sunlight is hitting it. So the water below is shadowed, and to a large extent, the water kind of above in, in the shadow of the castle is a little bit darker as well. So right there at the head of the waterfall is where I put the most highlights just to keep true to where the sunlight is hitting. And I'm continuing to chisel away again at the definition of the hills that the castle is on. And you can imagine that the color that I used for that was basically really bright green to yellow. I didn't want to put too much titanium white into that green highlight mixture for kind of the middle ground hills because I wanted to reserve that really bright green highlight for the foreground to give it that sense of closeness that uh, I just wanted to keep for the foreground. And if you're wondering what that is that I'm using to steady my hand there. You can use a ruler. It's basically just a stick of wood that you lean up against the easel with or whatever you're painting on uh, and rest your arm against so that you can get a really uh, steady hand for those finer details. It really helps in the detail stage. Here I'm taking a liner brush which has really long fine bristles and I'm taking, it's not, it, it looks black, but it's basically just burnt umber mixed with ultramarine blue. It adds a really, it, it mixes a really nice dark color that almost looks black, but I'm going ahead and I'm painting in uh, actual individual grass blades, which gives it that sense of this portion of the painting is really close. So I'm adding in, uh, really detailed grass effects to give that illusion of like maybe the viewer is standing on this hillside slash cliff in the foreground looking out over this vast valley with the water coming down from the mountains and the castle as well. So adding in those grass details. This painting is just about done. You notice I added in another grass uh, blade there, but I took it out because, I, I don't know, I just didn't like it. I, I end up doing that a lot, where I'll try something out, and then I'll be like, I don't really like that as much, so I'll just take it out. Sometimes I'll blend it into the background. Other times I'll just take a bit of a shop towel and actually just wipe it off. And right there, I am putting in some final details on the mountains and also highlighting the flags with a little bit of a brighter red. One of my favorite things about this painting is actually the landscape, how you can see the blue tones in the distance 
graduate towards the foreground in that brighter green um, contrast. I just love how the blues and greens go really well together. Blue and green is actually probably my most favorite combination. So I just, that's kind of my favorite thing about this painting. Also here I'm putting in some more trees, which I guess they could be bushes, they could be trees, I'm not really sure, but the mixture that I used for that was a burnt umber and ultramarine blue combination with a little bit of yellow, I believe, to make it a nice dark green color. And my finished tree consisted of three main color tones of green. So there's the dark green, which I just mentioned, which um, basically builds the shape and main body of the tree. And also a mid-tone green, which kind of helps define the shape of the tree. Um, and then also the bright green, which I guess almost was a yellow uh, in some spots, which is where that's where the sunlight is reflecting off of the leaves. So that's basically all there is to the trees that I painted. And now I'm taking a bluish, um, I guess you could say a bluish gray color um, with just enough titanium white to make it stand out in the background hills there. And I am painting this river way in the distance where you can imagine the um, mountains feed into it. And the last finishing touch is my signature, which is my initials. And with that, the painting is finished. And this here is the progression from start to finish of my painting. That is the digital idea going into the sketch. And then the block in stage followed by the modeling stage, which is followed by the detail stage. As always, it was a pleasure having you all out to the studio today. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe for more videos later on. I get to hang up this painting on the wall now that it is finished. And remember, I do have a website if you like these paintings and you want to purchase one. I sell some originals, so watch for those. I do sell canvas prints of a lot of these paintings, so be sure to check that out. You can do that by clicking on the About section of this channel, which will have a link that will take you directly to my website. That's it from me. Until next time, God bless you guys. We'll see you later.